Today we'll be talking about graphs, and specifically, what are graphs, what, it, what do they tell us, and how can we interpret them. So a graph is a picture that shows how two variables are related. Graphs are easier to read than tables of numbers. Okay, we have a visual aid here. And so they display the data that you collect during an experiment. For example, what data does this graph display? Or what story is this picture telling? So I see that we have bacon on the x-axis and it is increasing from left to right. And joy is on the y-axis from bottom to top, it is also increasing. So this tells me as there is more bacon, joy is increasing. Now what does this picture or what does this graph display? So we see that the in the independent variable, which is the x-axis, as the heating time increases, the water temperature also increases. So graphs are drawn with the independent variable on the horizontal or the x-axis, while the dependent variable goes on the vertical or the y-axis. So let's look at this graph. What is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable? So we see here we have time in hours and it's increasing from left to right. And we also see on the x-axis we have position in kilometers um, from 0 to 600 kilometers. So in this graph we see that the independent variable here is time. And it is so because we are free to decide what time we take the measurements. We can say we can take it from 0 to 1 hour and we'll get that data and that's it. We can decide. Distance on the other hand is dependent because the distance depends on the time. However much time you went is however much distance you also went. So if a time interval other than one hour had been chosen, the distance measurement would be different. So we use this acronym called dry mix to be able to tell what's dependent and what's independent. So dry, dry mix is this acronym. It'll help you remember which variable has to be plotted on in what graph and what does that tell you about it. So D stands for dependent variable. That means it's a responding variable to the independent variable. And we're going to graph this on the y-axis, on the vertical axis. On the other hand, M is the manipulated variable because you can change it. I is independent variable because it can stand alone. And it is graphed on the x-axis, which is the horizontal. So the independent variable is an experiment that is manipulated. Um, it causes changes in the dependent variable in the experiment. The independent variable is plotted on the x-axis of a graph. While the dependent variable is a variable in an experiment that changes in response to the experiment. And we graph that on the y-axis. So again, dependent variable is a responding variable and is graphed on the y-axis. The control variable in the experiment is something that is kept the same all throughout. So we need to have a control variable in order to make sure that our experiment is valid. So some important discussion questions that you should write on your notes is why is it important to only change one experimental variable at a time in an experiment? So this brings into question, let's say for example, you wish to do an experiment to determine how a ball's radius affects how fast it rolls down a ramp. List the independent and dependent variables in this experiment. On which axis would they be graphed? Now, also think of an experiment involving gas mileage. What would your variables and on what axis would you graph each on?